Chapter number three, DHCP. Before we look into the solution on using DHCP, let's focus on the issue faced by manual network parameters configuration. Now, when we configure IP address, there are two ways for you to configure it. We can either configure it manually or we call it as static IP, or we can configure it as dynamically or using DHCP. So if we are going to configure using manual, we have a few challenges. One of it is too many hard to understand parameters. As you can see, if you configure your IP address, first you need to know what IP address to configure. Second, what's the network mask that you are going to configure. And then you also need to vary what is the IP address for the gateway. So if you are just a common user, you may not have this information. So this will cause the user not able to connect to the network. You also cannot just simply add any IP over here. Either that you will cause some conflict in the network or you can't connect anywhere. Now, second problem we face when we use a manual configuration is a huge workload. Network administrator centrally configure network parameter, which is a heavy workload. So rather than user need to configure, now the administrator have to configure all the laptop or the desktop. So network administrator need to plan and allocate IP addresses to user in at once. So these are the two uh, issues that face by the administrator. The third issue that we face by using a manual parameters is a low utilization. As you can see that these are all the uh, devices that we have in the network. Some of that are offline user and some of that are online user. Those offline user, once you configure statically, they were going to use it for a long period of time unless that you are going to reassign to another uh, device. But if two of the device using the same IP are online at the same time, then you will have a conflict of IP. So we have a low utilization because uh, the IP address are being kept even though it's offline. And then we also have a poor flexibility. In this diagram, you can see we have two offices, Office A and Office B. Office A, we have a Wi-Fi and Office B also have Wi-Fi. Now the user are moving between one office to another office. Assuming if you are using a static IP, if you go from office A to office B, you may need to reconfigure your IP. So these are the four major issues if you are using a static IP. So what is the solution then? The solution is using what we call a DHCP. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So this is a solution for addressing the four issues that we have mentioned earlier on. DHCP adopt the client-server architecture, so which means that we have a client. So the client, uh, these are the client, okay? And we also have a server. So the host do not need to configure and can automatically obtain IP addresses from a DHCP. Now, because the DHCP assigned the IP, this IP address will be recorded in the DHCP server. So if the client is offline for a certain period of time, this IP address will be released and be reassigned to other clients. And because that if you are using a Wi-Fi, regardless whether you are in Office A or Office B, it really doesn't matter because the DHCP server can reassign another working IP if the user are roaming from Office A to Office B. So the benefit of using DHCP is enable host plug and play after they are connected to the network. So these are the basic concept of DHCP. Most likely a client will use dynamic IP and the server will use a static IP. So let's look into the DHCP advantages. So the first advantages is the unified management. Unified management means that the DHCP, the DHCP server contain all the necessary parameter central. So IP address are obtained from the address pool. So DHCP contain this address pool. So in this case, we have pool number one, which consists of the DNS, the network, the number of IP address that is available, the IP address that is being used, what is the default gateway and what is the subnet mask. This information are stored in the DHCP. So DHCP record and maintain the usage of the IP address. So we have a centralized management of the IP address. And secondly, we also can have this address list. When the client requests from a DHCP, DHCP will give them certain number of hours. As you can see from here, this IP address can use for eight hours. If you are offline, then this IP address will be released and used by another 
client. So in this case, we can solve the issue of the IP address are being statically assigned for a long period of time. So let's look into the working principle of the DHCP. So I want you to uh, see here carefully. We have a client here and we also have a DHCP server here. So this DHCP server have a pool and that pool is called pool 1 which have address of 255 addresses and two of them are being used. I also want you to take note that there are blue color here which is a traffic sent by DHCP client and we also have the purple color here which is a DHCP server. So I want you to look into the first step. This is our first step. The first step is that the DHCP discover, uh, in this case, this is a broadcast used to discover the DHCP on the current network. So when the client first put up, it doesn't have IP address. So the client is going to do a broadcast. So when it broadcasts, the DHCP will able to capture this broadcast and respond to the client. So the next thing here is, Number two, the server is uh, respond to the broadcast. But this time, I want you to concentrate here is a unicast. The first packet is a broadcast, okay? I need to unicast to DHCP client because I already know the MAC address of the client because when the client first uh, broadcast, it also contain the MAC address. So when the DHCP offer, it will just send the unicast over to the client. But remember, this communication is still at the layer 2 MAC address. Now step number 3, as you can see here, the client this time is not unicast. Even though the DHCP already communicate with the client, but as you can see that now, the DHCP request is again is a broadcast. Inform the server that it used this IP address. And uh, finally, the step number 4, DHCP ACK unicast. So in this case, the server upon receive the offer is going to do a DHCP acknowledge acknowledge the client use of the IP address okay so this is the DHCP uh, acknowledge so the mnemonic over here is very simple so first is that the client is do a discover then the server is going to offer and then the client is going to do a request and finally the server is going to acknowledge which is DORA Okay, discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. So these are the mechanism on how DHCP work. So we have a question here. Why does a DHCP client need to send a DHCP request packet to DHCP server to notify its use of particular address after receiving a DHCP offer? Uh, it means that on the step number three here, why did the DHCP need to send a request in a broadcast? Format. Now, please remember that in the network, you may have more than one DHCP, okay? So if I have two DHCP in the network, and the first one here is actually of a DHCP is going to respond. Who you think that the DHCP will respond? Will it be the first DHCP or the second DHCP? In fact, both of them will respond. But because the client only need to choose one of the IP address from one of the DHCP, so the client need to broadcast the intention, assuming that it choose number one DHCP. So number two DHCP, after receive the broadcast, will release the IP address and uh, it will not be reserved for this particular client. You get what I mean here? Because in the network, you may have more than one DHCP server. So that's why on step number three, DHCP client need to do a broadcast to inform the server that it will use this IP address. Okay, so this is the uh, DHCP working principle. It's not very difficult. Just remember the mnemonic called DORA, discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement. So it's a broadcast, unicast, broadcast, and unicast. Now then, once the IP address is being leased, then we also have what we call the lease renewal, DHCP lease renewal. Now, when the DHCP already have an IP on the lease date, let's say now we have eight days for the client to use. On the fourth day, or in this case, 50% of the lease, the client is going to do a DHCP request in a unicast request the server for an IP address renewal. So if you have eight days on the fourth days, I'm going to renew. So in this example, it's actually used eight hours. 
So that means that in the after I use for four hours, the client is going to ask for extension. If this is allowed, and if let's say I have these resources, the HCP is going to do a unicast, notify the client that the IP address can be renewed and the list is updated. And assuming that the DHCP is not available, so the DHCP client is going to re-attempt again on the seven hours or seven days. Okay, so this is how it works. If the DHCP client fail to receive a response from the original DHCP server at 50% of the list, or we call it as a T1, then DHCP client will wait until 87.5 or known as T2. If you use eight hours, then on the seven hours, I'm going to re-attempt second time, we call T2. At T2, the client enter the rebinding state and broadcast a DHCP request to which DHCP server can respond. So on T2, the client, instead of using a unicast, is going to do a broadcast because the state that we are here at T2 is called rebinding state. And at this state, it is going to use a broadcast. Okay, so these are the mechanism on the DHCP. So let's look into the DHCP configuration syntax. So first, we need to enable the DHCP. So we use DHCP enable. Then we go into the interface and enable which interface is enabled for DHCP. We can specify the DNS IP address. Then we also can specify what is the IP address to be excluded. Now, why you need to exclude the IP address? Assuming that if you have an IP address of, let's say, 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.254. And let's say the server is actually used .1 and .2 because server need to have a fixed IP. So what is the start IP then? Your start IP are supposed to be start from dot three. Okay, remember if it's dot one, dot two already been used, then your start IP should be dot three. And uh, you also have to specify the end IP. Okay, maybe you do not want to utilize all of this. Maybe your client only have 10, uh, 10 clients, so you can actually specify only 10 IP in the address range. Then finally, you also have this uh, command, DHCP server list. You can specify the number of days, hours, minutes, or unlimited, okay, for the list time for the DHCP IP to list out this IP. And by default, if you don't specify, the address list is one day, which is 24 hours. Now let's look into the second set of command. Here we need to create a pool, okay, and we have to specify the pool name. This pool name, include the network IP address mask and the uh, subnet mask length and followed by what is the gateway. So there's a second set of the command. Now then you, you can specify the DNS list and followed by the list. Now remember that there are two ways for you to configure that. Either you configure on the interface or you can configure on the global. So remember on the previous step, okay, I go back here. You can see that we are using a DHCP select interface. This is where we configure using an interface as a DHCP. You also can configure the DHCP to select the global. So let's look into this uh, configuration and this configuration we are having this uh, DHCP client and we also have a DHCP server. So the requirement is to configure a router as a DHCP server, configure the subnet on which gig 0 slash 0 slash 0 belong as the address pool of DHCP client, set the IP address on the gig 0 0 to that of the DNS server and set the list of three days. Okay, so these are the requirement. As you can see from here, we are going to set the address pool and uh, we are going to apply that in the uh, gig 00 interface. So first we configure the DHCP to enable. We go to gig 00 slash uh, zero and then we use DHCP select interface. Okay, remember that we can do uh, Another option is to do a DHCP select global. We specify the DNS IP.
and what IP address need to be excluded uh, because the 10.1.1.2 already assigned to to DNS so we should exclude it and we also list out for three days Now, if let's say you do not want to configure on the interface, then you have another option is to configure that on this uh, pool. So same uh, topology here, all right? And you can see that the client and the DHCP are under the layer two broadcast domain. So let's look into the requirement. Configure a router as a DHCP and configure the global address pool. And this time the pool name is called pool two to assign IP address on the subnet on 1.1.1.0 slash 24 to DHCP client. Set both the gateway address and DNS address to 1.1.1.1 and the list day is 10 days. Use the gate 00 to use global address pool. So this time, instead of using interface, we are using the address pool. Let's look into this example. Again, the first command is the same. We enable the DHCP. Now we are going to configure a pool and the pool name is called pool2. So after the pool has been configured, you are inside the IP pool called pool2. You have to specify the network mask. So in this case, the requirement is to configure 1.1. Zero slash twenty four. So this is a command called network command. This is our gateway. This is our DNS, and this is our list day. And on the interface that we have, go to gate zero slash zero slash. Zero, we select DHCP, select global. So the difference over here is this is a global. The previous example is using interface. 